we've been we've been doing this procedure now for a while here at the hospital, which has been really nice um, for not only the patient but also the community itself. Before people were having to go to Atlanta and Birmingham multiple times before the procedure, for the uh, before the procedure, during the procedure, and even after the procedure. By keeping this kind of locally, we've had great response from the community and families. Now families are very involved, which helps the patient relieve some of that stress on them. Overall, it's allowed us to build a bridge through our hospital and our community to not only increase the technology with this procedure, but to move forward from a cardiac standpoint to bring things in further. The TAVR procedure stands for transcatheter aortic valve replacement, T-A-B-R. And traditionally, uh, cardiac surgeons would, would have replaced the valve, specifically the aortic valve, doing an open chest, open heart surgery. And we still do that under certain circumstances. Um, but the TAVR procedure is a closed chest, minimally invasive valve replacement procedure that involves no surgical incisions. So it's completely without incisions. Uh, very similar to a heart cath, we do needle punctures in the groin to get access and we implant the valve going through the groin instead of having to open the chest. The whole process of having a TAVR, of having a TAVR procedure, um, it starts weeks in advance. So the patient gets referred to us either from their primary care physician or the primary cardiologist, or they can come to us directly without a referral from, from our perspective. If you have a valve problem or you're worried about it, if you have a murmur, we can see those patients here at the Heart Valve Center. Uh, if you get diagnosed with aortic stenosis, uh, usually it's with an echocardiogram. So most patients, by the time they get to us, have an echocardiogram. Or if they don't, we get one pretty quickly. So that's how we see the valve and make the diagnosis. We've tried to make it very seamless and easy for not only patients, but also for referring providers. And that is even on the day of the procedure. So a patient will come in for the procedure, where they'll go to get ready for that procedure, be prepped. So they'll see a very familiar face, which is our valve coordinator, so they can ask questions, they feel more comfortable. And then they're moved to a room that is very much like a catheterization suite that they're already used to. We utilize here our anesthesia team to not only make the patient sleepy and comfortable, but also provide a very safe environment for the patient and us for this procedure. By the time they wake up, the valve has been implanted. All they have is a small Band-Aid on their wrist, two little spots on their groin, and by that evening, we have them walking. The procedure itself, it relieves the obstruction, which causes their symptoms, which has slowed them down, usually for a long period of time before uh, we do the procedure itself. Afterwards, the whole purpose of the procedure is to relieve that obstruction, therefore getting them back to their quality of life, decreasing the risk of, of death long-term, simply by relieving the obstruction. So overall, the patient should return to everything they were doing prior to the valve becoming an issue in a relatively short amount of time post-procedure. Most patients after the tower procedure, they wake up, not all the time, but most of the time, they wake up and can immediately tell a difference. Uh, the heart's been used to, by this time, usually by the time they show up to us for weeks to months, the heart has been overworking itself to try to get blood past this calcified, unmobile, immobile valve. Um, and so once you replace the valve and give it a normal functioning valve, the heart, the blood flow makes it out of the heart just fine. And most patients can tell as soon as they wake up. Um, we see patients one week after the procedure. And most of the time when they come to us before the procedure, they've been saying things like, I can't make it to the mailbox without having shortness of breath. I can't make it in my own house without having to take breaks from shortness of breath. Um, I used to could play golf and now I can't make it past the first two or three holes anymore. Um, those patients, as soon as they come back, one or two weeks after the procedure, they can notice a big difference and usually are already asking when they can go back and do the things that they couldn't do before. So here at East Alabama uh, Medical Center, we actually have done really well. And I tell patients less than three days uh, for the recovery while they're in the hospital, although we've done really well and we've cut that down to about two days. And usually within two weeks, people are doing everything they were doing as before the valve was causing any issues. To be a great candidate for this procedure is usually kind of threefold. One, that a patient who has been active and is willing and wants to get better. That's a big component to this, is the patient's willingness. Number two, you need to have symptoms. So worsening fatigue, shortness of breath, chest pain, passing out. So we have a patient, we have a symptom, and now with an echocardiogram, which is a non-invasive way of evaluation, we can look at the flow. And as long as the valve is now considered severe, the flow has had to increase to make up for a small orifice to get out, uh, for blood to get out. Now we have a patient who needs the procedure itself. So before we offer this procedure here, every one of these patients had to go to either Birmingham or Atlanta to UAB or Emory to have this procedure done. And I mean, those are great institutions, obviously, but nobody really wants to leave home 
when you're sick, you already have a health problem. You're sick, you're not feeling well, you can barely walk, you're having problems breathing. And then you have to go out of town, stay at a hotel somewhere, navigate a system that you're totally unfamiliar with. I did this in Dallas before I came here. Dr. Reams, my cardiology partner, did this before he came here. And so we're, we're still in the process of making the community aware and working out our processes here in the hospital. Uh, but those are our goals also. It's very important that we brought this procedure to East Alabama to the community, not only to allow patients and families to be a big part of it, but also to grow as a hospital itself, to allow those advancements for things to come that we are allowed to do here and to make it very safe and streamlined. Therefore, patients no longer have to go far and abroad to have their services.